Hey there, welcome to this Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team Faction Focus. Today we're going to be having a look at the Harlequin Void Dancer Troop. This video has by no means a deep dive and we're going to skip over some aspects of the team to save time. What I do hope though is that you might pick up one or two ideas to try out in your own games. These are just some strategies I've picked up with the help of some of the top players. This series for me is about finding tips and tricks as opposed to hard recommendations. In my opinion, experimenting and finding ways of making teams fit your own playstyle is the most important thing. Ok, intro out of the way, let's get started. So here's the contents of what we're going to cover today. But first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to Bart Lewandowski. So Bart's one of the top two players over here in the UK. Um, he's taught me everything I know about Harlequins. So yeah, cheers man, thanks a lot. Uh, there's also photos scattered throughout, so thank you very much to the people who sent those over. Okay, cool. So we're going to be having a look at the playstyle. Um, first of all, looking at the general playstyle of the Harlequins. And then specifically, we're going to be having a look at the Sadas and just breaking down each of those, saying what situations you might take them and how best to run them. Next, we're going to have a look at the operatives. Um, so in some previous videos, we jumped into TTS for this. Uh, today, it's just going to be slides. I think that's the best format for us to do it in. We're going to have a look at some of the strategic and tactical ploys, which haven't been covered in depth by this stage. And uh, for a change, we're going to have a look at tac ops as well. So I think Harlequins are really great. They've got great faction tac ops and three faction decks to choose from. Uh, sorry, three archetype decks to choose from. So we're going to have a look at those two. Uh, this selection, not so much. And the equipment, that's very much whatever you prefer. Harlequins have got great equipment and it's just whatever takes you fancy. For the general playstyle, uh, one of the most defining things is fly. This makes them really fast in combination with the three APL. Um, they've also got really hard hitting melee as well. So with Fly you can dictate which charges you want to take on and you're going to be getting the first hit. All of your melee is 4 damage as a minimum with the exception of the Death Chester. Um, and you can really charge in and get quite consistent kills. They've got 3 APL. So of course having 3 actions is really good. Um, you can do things like move and do a mission action that costs 2. Um, something like loot and salvage you can uh, dash, loot a point and move away. Or just generally you could charge, fight, shoot. Um, so having your one 8 wound model and then you could potentially trade it for two others. Um, you're, an, you're an 8 man team. So if you're trading two for one consistently then yeah, there's no other team that's got 16 bodies. Uh, it's also really good for controlling points. So you don't have to use your APL aggressively. You can just use it to move on to points at the end of turns um, or control them to let you do mission actions on them. Uh, three, 3 APL is just fantastic. Another faction defining thing is Domino Field and the Hollow Suits. Hollow Suits, not so much. That's kind of a nice thing to have, the four up in Vaughan all the time. But Domino Field is really strong. Um, so being able to be always on a conceal order, as uh, so long as you're more than six inches away from the enemy, um, is, yeah, absolutely fantastic. It prevents you getting shot. And it's a little bit weaker than the Compendia one. So in that Domino Field was a two inch range as opposed to six inch. But, you can still play around that. You can have more of you guys on concealed than you might have otherwise. Um, yeah, so Domino Field is absolutely fantastic and it also lets you get charges off um, without being able to be shot. One thing you do have to your disadvantage is that you've got a lack of multiple range threats. So you've got the Shadow Seer who can do chip damage with Mirror of Mines and you've got the Death Jester who's a fantastic piece to reach out and kill things. But apart from that, you've not really got anything else. Um, you're very much a three to six inch pistol range kind of team um, and then you've got to play around that using your other tricks. One thing which I find the most interesting about Harlequins is you've got really great loadouts and tack up choices. Uh, your normal guys have got a choice of four viable melee weapons, you've got great equipment as well as I said already um, and the tack ops you can play those depending on what the matchup is, what the mission is and um, there's a lot of variability in how you take the team. I think that's something that's missing a lot in Kill Team 2. So now we're going to start breaking down the different Sadas. Um, so the first one, Comedy. This is the one where you do a fallback action and it lets you do it for cheaper. Not a huge fan of this. Um, I could potentially see it if you're wanting to hide in melee. Um, so if you can charge something that's already activated and then next turn fall back for cheaper. Um, I can't really think of too many situations when you would want to use this to be honest. Um, you need a bit more experimenting with it as well. But one thing I could potentially see is maybe if you've got two guys in melee and going into turn four you could change your Sadath into this. You might be able to make some nice plays there. 
Another thing you could do is that you could try and score performance points with cut and falls. Um, so charge, hit something for chip damage, and then fall back. Um, spending CP to get one performance point, probably not the best use. Um, two performance points at most if you've got the pivotal roll. Um, yeah, not a huge fan of this, so I'll move on. Next up is Epic. Uh, this is really cool. It lets you retain a crit if you um, don't roll any melee, and then you can use that to strike or parry as normal. And it's also pretty easy to score performance points for this. Um, so against low wound teams, you can generally incapacitate them in two or less hits. Um, so this is a good one. Um, kisses are something a lot of people are a fan of. So putting the 7 damage crit uh, kiss on one of you guys, charging into a 7 wound model and being able to one shot them without taking any damage. But that's also going to help you keep your wounds up, stop being injured as well. So if you want to charge, fight, shoot, you're less likely to take that injury. You can also use Epic to guarantee murderous entrance. So you can charge in, you don't want any crits, um, Epic gives you one, and then you can hit them, and then do a second one for murderous entrance. Um, being able to push through a lot of damage before your opponent can react is very strong. You can also uh, use the crit to not strike, but instead to parry. So if your opponent's only got the one crit, you can parry that out. And then when they try and strike you with a normal, you're going to get Kigarashi's Jess, whereas you wouldn't against the crit. And generally when you're striking with crits, they're harder to parry. Um, so they would need crits to parry you, but also it can be useful into some specific abilities. So if you're in the mirror match or against uh, Drakari, um, Kigarashi's Jess and Agachar Gladiators, you can punch a crit through and that's going to pass straight through that. Generally this is a really good one. Um, I think I'm not as much of a fan of it as some people. Um, I know a lot of people are liking it for the kisses. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of blades. Um, I think one of the matchups where I'd be definitely looking to this would be against Novitiates. So they've got seven wound models that can deal out four or five damage to you. Being able to charge in and one shot them without taking five damage, which would put you to being injured. Um, very strong indeed. Uh, melodrama. This is probably my personal favourite. It's a reroll in shooting and you get it by killing something with two or more attack dice. Um, so normally I'd be putting this on the Death Jester, so you're going to be getting potential free shots turn one, um, and that makes him really killy as well. So on the Death Jester in particular, you're rolling five dice with a reroll, you're going up to six, you've got a really good chance of procking renting there. Um, another good thing with the Death Jester is it works with Torrent as well. So if you think you're going to get a torrent shot off turn 1, you could potentially uh, move up, take the torrent shot, and then you're getting a reroll on both of those attacks. Another play you could make is to put it on a guy with a uh, prismatic grenade. So if you're going into hordes, um, the opponent's deployment zone is a little bit stacked. You could potentially make a recon dash move, move your guy up, uh, move the dash to the grenade, and let's say you're hitting 3 or 4 targets, you're going to get a reroll into each of those as well. Another way you could use it is just to make your shooting more consistent. So if we're looking at the fusion pistol or an upgraded neuro disruptor, um, put it on that, you've got a nice reroll there. Um, you're hitting on threes normally, put your leader, that's on twos, you can make that a really lethal shooting attack. Uh, generally I really like melodrama. Uh, <laughs> I think even your basic pistols can do work into seven wound guardsmen. Um, and your fusion and euro are going to get kills as well. I think you can get up to four with this pretty comfortably in a lot of matchups into the squishy teams. Next up is Odyssey. Um, so with an extra inch of your charge, you can charge deeper. So that'll let you get further in, might help you score attack ops, might help you double charge something. And generally that extra inch is going to give you um, just better positioning. And that might let you get an objective, for example. Uh, another thing it's good for is non-reciprocal charges. So a lot of the time, your Harlequins are going to have fly. Uh, you can be up on a vantage point and you're able to charge them, but they can't charge you because they would have to climb up. But let's say you're playing on something which doesn't have that kind of terrain, um, something like Chana, where there's a lot of kind of ruined walls and you're tucked right up in against that, and they can just charge in a straight line and get straight in within an inch of you. So what you can do is just set yourself up an extra inch back so especially against elite teams where you're out activating them, you can just set up 9.1 inches away and you can charge them. They can't charge you. 
I find it quite useful for performance points against the elites as well. Um, so I'm finding them a tough nut to crack at the minute. Um, generally, a lot of the other Sadaths that you're going to have here um, involve killing things. Odyssey doesn't. So if you can charge an enemy's gunner or some kind of uh, less strong melee piece, maybe like a bluffing piece, and, and then you'll just be able to score performance points for that without actually having to roll dice. So overall, I think Odyssey definitely has its place. Um, a little bit more situational, maybe. I think I probably prefer epic and melodrama over this. And then the last one is tragedy. So this is the one where when you uh, lose wounds in shooting, you get a point, and it's one unless you retain cover if you don't have it. So this is great in the kind of matchups where you're expecting to be shot anyway. Um, so you can be having your guys; they're taking hits, and you're just racking up performance points. And then as soon as you hit four, your whole team is in cover all the time. So that lets you play more aggressively. If you know that you're going to get shot anyway, you may as well be shot with cover. So if your opponent's going to get close enough to negate domino field, they can get within two inches of you to just ignore the concealed completely. This is, yeah, just a really handy thing to have and it makes you guys a lot more tanky. Another thing that's really handy is you can com combine it with prismatic blur. So you've got four up in the vault, so even if they're shooting a plasma gun at you, you're fine. And then you've got an auto retain for tragedy, and then you can have a reroll for prismatic blow as well if you've already moved. So again, if we're talking about going to shoot your hordes, uh, charge fight shoot, and then they're going to try and shoot you back. But actually, you've got a pretty decent chance of surviving that. Another thing is that when you're positioning your guys, try to only take chip damage. So you want to spread the tragedy points around. Uh, what you don't really want to do is say um, have two guys completely killed. That'll get you two to three performance points. You're better off having four guys taking a little bit of chip damage, scoring points that way, rather than having your guys off the board. Um, yep, Tragedy just generally lets you be more aggressive. Um, I think it's really cool. You could say that it's a bit more of a passive one. Uh, how I'd be looking to use it is to let you make the kind of plays and get away with it where otherwise you might not be able to. Overall, this is a really good one too. Um, so you can see that even with these five different Sadas, three of them are really good, two of them more situational. Um, but still, these are the kind of decisions that you've got to make with this team. Moving on to the operatives. Um, so first off is the lead player. I really like this model, hitting on twos is fantastic. But then the shuriken pistol, that actually becomes pretty killy. 3-4 rounding, hitting on twos. Um, that's pretty reliable into your softer models. Another option would be to give him the fusion pistol. So hitting on twos to kill a 12-wound model with one reroll, either Melodrama or Wraith Bone Talisman, you've got around a 90% chance to kill that guy. So this 12 wound model, 3 up save, 90% chance. If you think you're going to be going last, you can out activate the enemy, move up, finish something off. That's a great way to use him. You could also consider it if you want to charge, fight, shoot. But if you're doing that, try not to get injured along the way as well. So probably charge something like a gunner that might hit you for 3, kill that off, and then fusion pistol something else. Uh, another thing is that you can just spread the threats out as well. So instead of putting fusion on the leader, just put it on another guy. So you've got your two regular uh, gunners elsewhere, and he's just your power sword guy. One thing which is lived out there, um, not seen anybody else running this, you can have a blade against something which really doesn't have very good melee. So something like Pathfinders, for example, they're hitting you on fives. A lot of the time you can just parry them out and kill them. There's not a great chance that on five dice you'd roll three ones, but it could happen, and you might actually need three hits to kill a Pathfinder model. They've got something like the Recon Drone and the Shield Drone, which have got more wounds, but I think the power weapon's actually overkill here. I'd be going for the consistency with the blade. Uh, another thing is you generally want to try to keep them alive if you're thinking about doing performance lead as well, so changing up your Sadath once again. That's a really useful ability, might lead to you playing a little bit more passively within turn one and two. And then potentially turn three, that's when you might go aggressive with him, change your say that, get that out of the way, and then start charging in and try to kill things. Uh, for the players, the two most commonly run options will be all blades or kisses. Um, I really like blades personally. I find the consistency of balance is just too good to pass up most of the time. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm not a massive fan of epic as well. I think running kisses just locks you into doing epic and not other things. Um, and even if you do go epic, I think you can still have a mix of blades and kisses. You can have the blades to get your performance points, 
And then after that, you've almost got the Kisses in there as a second wave um, to charge in and one-shot stuff. The Caress could come in as an edge case as well. Um, so things like Nurgle Legionary, if you're going to have your 4-5 damage with Rending, um, they're playing the minus 1 damage on normals. So you're instead on 3-5 damage profile. So then if you're charging in, you've got about a 60% chance to get a crit on 5 dice. Um, so you can, yeah, if you get one crit, you get a second, and you're doing 10 damage instead of, say, uh, 9 or 8 or something like that with a different weapon. I can also see it against Void Dance as well. So with Keg Rash's Jest, you want crits to try and bust through. It's pretty dicey, but if that's the way you want to play it, you could consider running the crest there just for the rending into them. Another thing it's pretty useful against is Warp Coven Sorcerers. So this is pretty edge case stuff. But if you've got a 13 wound sorcerer, they've got the equipment to do minus one damage on a crit once again. You could hit them with the crest crit, the bonus rending crit, and then the normal damage would do 14, gets dropped to 13 with their equipment, and um, that's still enough to kill them off. Another one you could have is the locust as well. So really scary melee guy. A lot of the time he's going to be parrying your lone crit out, but this gives you two. So even if he uses his, uh, I forgot what it's called, Duelist ability to parry your crit, you're still going to have one crit to hit him for five, and then finish him off a little bit later. Uh, lastly, the Embrace, that's got Brutal on it. Not a massive fan of this. I think the situation that you use it is when you want to get more lethal five up in the team. And that's going to get you more chance of getting Murderous Entrance, for example. So charging in, you just need, yeah. One five up on five dice, and that's going to let you prop the entrance, do a load of damage before you can get hit back. Uh, generally, I like to put the Neuro Disruptor on the regular players. The Shadow Seer is the other uh, unit you can put this on, but I find he's a little bit less active, a um, bit more of a buffing piece, debuffing piece, and yeah, I just like to have Shadow Seer a little bit further back and have the Neuro on one of your regular guys. Uh, moving on to the Death Jester, so when you're deploying him, it's really nice that you can deploy him on the engage, let's be a little bit more aggressive. So one thing you could do for example is you could put him somewhere out in the open uh, and then you can fire your torrent shot, to, that costs 2 APL and then you can move away after that and get obscured, get out of visibility so they can't shoot you back. Uh, one thing when you're doing this is be careful of things that ignore obscurity. So with your 3 APL you can be popping about like a dash shoot, move back to get obscured, but if you're playing against Pathfinders, Hunter Clade, something like that, uh, Phobos now, they're going to be ignoring obscuring. So what you want to do there is try and get out of visibility. So there's normally one piece of cover which is going to be DC which is going to let you do that. So you probably want to deploy him somewhere near there. Another thing to consider as well that he's a really tall model. So if you aren't careful with him, you could have an enemy on advantage and they're going to be able to see down, see the tip of your shrieky cannon and take shots of you. Um, so again, especially if they're out activating you, you've already made your play, you've taken a shot, you've broken domino field, they're going to be able to hit you for some. Other things to be careful of are things like photon grenades and freezing grasp. Any kind of ability that's going to stop you dashing, you want to try and avoid playing into. So the death jest is fantastic when you can do that. Um, move shoot dash and not get any return fire on you those will stop you being able to do that and the shrieky cannon is really cool so if you're playing into more elite enemies um, say like 12 plus wound models the shrieky cannon isn't going to one shot them a lot of the time but you will still be injuring them potentially and that's really useful for dampening the enemy's movement and making them hit worse but yeah I think the the movement debuff is something that you can count on a little bit consistently, so that might stop the movement onto an objective, for example. Uh, another thing I really like with the Death Jester is the combination of Melodrama and the Wraithman Talisman. So if you've got five dice, you could potentially have up to seven dice if you need it. If there's one turn where you really need to kill something, um, Death Jester is going to have yeah seven dice to try and proc crits for rending, and that's super consistent damage output. Another thing I've been thinking about, I um, want to experiment with this a little bit more, is using him a little bit more aggressively. So uh, I'm talking Death Jester Melee in particular. If you're running Epic, 
you can potentially charge in, do a 4 damage crit, and then after that you would still have a potential 3 damage to go through. Uh, you can kill a 7 wheel model if you've got the 3 hits there. Um, I think you've got some kind of plays that you can make with him, so some kind of interesting like charge fight shoot if you're already in melee from the previous turn you might be able to fight do a torrent shot um, fight shoot move i think he's a lot more flexible piece than necessarily just some kind of backline guy popping about taking free shots if the terrain's not going to let you get uh, shots off early turns i think you can move them up you can get performance points for thing like things like odyssey as well um yeah i think there's a lot of flex in this model beyond just using him as a gun platform. Uh, and last operative is Shadow Seer. Um, the Veil of Tears is really good for some operative that's on conceal. Uh, so Domino Field says you have to be within one inch of a terrain piece um, to let you get the benefits of that. Um, so to use Veil of Tears on an operative and have them stand literally wide out in the open, not in cover, you would need to have them on conceal, but that'll let you make some nice plays there. Mirror of Minds you can do from Conceal. It's basically a silent weapon that lets you do chip damage. Um, so that's really cool if you've got something which is already wounded, or if you just want to say uh, jump up an advantage, Mirror of Minds, dash back down. That's just free output in the early turns. Fog of Dreams is really good. Uh, so delaying activations is just, yeah, really cool ability. So if your enemy's got some key threat that you know they need to activate, then you can Fog of Dreams them to stop that happening. A lot of things that your opponent will try and do is to um, try and oversaturate you with threats. So they'll move two guys up, so even if they don't get initiative, they'll still get to do one. But then you can Fog of Dreams one and take out the other potentially. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of play in this. Another thing you can do is if they've got some kind of buffing piece. So I'm thinking something like a uh, Death Guard guy with a bell. You make that go last, all of a sudden he's not able to give the extra movement to the guys around him. Uh, final thing on the Shadow Seer is Fog of Dreams on a Chaff model. So again, let's use Warp Coffin as an example. Your opponent's got a mix of Zangors and Sorcerers. Um, what you really want to do is wait out the Sorcerers activations. So what you can do is Fog of Dreams on a Zangor. They're going to go last. The Sorcerer is going to have to make some kind of move. They'll move into the open and then that'll give you some counter counter play with your last activation before the Zangor goes at the end. Uh, moving on to ploys, so the ones I want to cover off that we've not spoken about already, uh, starting off with Curtain Falls. So this is really cool if you get bad dice. So it's let you charge in, um, you can see what roll you get, uh, and then you can just back out of that melee if you need to. You can also use it as a slingshot, so being able to uh, charge 8 or 9 uh, and then make a 6 inch fallback, that's crazy high movement. So I think even if you're not using this to get the melee output, just that kind of maneuverability, um, 2 AP, uh, sorry, 3 APL, uh, 3 AP to make the 14, 15 inch move and do chip damage as well. That's just crazy. You can also use it to score Grand Act. Um, so that's the one where you need to do all of the five different performances. So being able to use this to satisfy the fallback condition of that is really cool. You can also use it to do chip damage. So if you're going into something which is uh, really durable that you can't really charge in melee and kill in one go, you can use this to whittle them down a little bit and let you finish them off with somebody else coming in later. If you've got a lot of CP as well, so maybe you've got your Sadath, uh, Death Mask, or maybe some mission like Jewel of Wits where you've got um, an excess of CP, you could combo with the Murderous Entrance as well. So you could charge in, do... Uh, say 5 damage for a crit and then 4 damage normal and then uh, Curtain falls away and then you've got something which is probably on half health or less that somebody else can finish off. Uh, one thing to note with the Curtain Falls is that you can't use it on the Killing Strike. Um, so as soon as you incapacitate an enemy the combat ends so that means that you then can't play Curtain Falls. Uh, Kegarash's Jest, so one thing that I learned the other day which I found really cool um, you can make them injured first before you um, have them try and hit you and then they'll be affected worse. So the way Kegarach's Jess works is it compares the weapon skill of the, uh, the attack they're trying to make with that weapon profile. But if you've injured them already, their weapon skill is going to be worse. So it's not based upon the attack dice they retained at the start of the combat. 
it's based on whatever their uh, weapon skill is for that weapon now when it would try to strike you so even if they're retained on a three this eight wound model you hit it with a crit take it down to three wounds they're injured now uh, when they try and hit you they're not going to be trying to roll a three or under uh, you would be trying to do a four under to turn that into a parry instead another thing to consider is that you want to avoid uh, enemies getting combat support so if they're getting plus one to hit your kegrak chest is less likely to go off and then the last one here is between colors this is pretty much a quite situational one it's pretty good on missions where you've got some kind of one ap mission action so again something like loot and salvage you've got an enemy blocking off a point you've got a fusion pistol guy i need to move shoot that guy and also get on the point to loot it so that way you can break up the movement with between colors kill the guy off get on the point and then with your last action you can loot it there uh, and then to cover off tack ops as well so as I say, Holoquins, really interesting. Uh, I played the tournament yesterday. I ran three different decks throughout the day uh, and swapped in different ones depending on what I was facing. So yeah, uh, really useful flexibility and I think that really lets you um, vary it up and just generally get more out of the team than you can with any other team in terms of tack ops. First off, you've got three really strong ones. I think Hero's Path is a bit more situational. Um, you've got Mythic Play, which is really easy to score 4 points on, a little bit more difficult for 6. But Grand Act, as I say, you can potentially score that easily with Curtain Falls. Uh, these strong ones are going to let you take out some of the weak attack ops. So I'd say all the 3 decks you got to pick from, one of those is probably not fantastic. So I'm thinking things like Mark Target from Recon, uh, Challenge from Seek and Destroy, Behind Enemy Lines for Infiltration. I'm not a huge fan of any of these, I would be looking to drop those out. Uh, unless the map or mission really suited it. Another thing is that when you try and score say that points, a lot of those involve killing things. That combos really well with Seek and Destroy. So you can almost be playing the game and you're getting Seek and Destroy points and you're also getting say that points. Uh, first off, looking at Infiltration, you've got 3 APL. As mentioned, you've got some 2 AP mission actions, which this is really good for. You've also got Fly as well. Um, so that'll help you position where you want to get up the board, get within 6 inches of the enemy DZ within 1 inch of the heavy and, and get those off quite easily. One thing I also like as well is interloper on the shadow seer. So if you've got a triangle deployment, the distance from that bottom right hand corner, if you're in the bottom left, um, over to that right hand board edge, it's actually not very far. So you can kind of hang the shadow seer back, um, make movements over that way, stay concealed, cast your psychic powers, and then turn four, just move dash and get him off that board. Uh, volume of attacks really good for implant. So all you guys hit on threes, so you've got five attacks or uh, yeah, twos for the leader. And you've got blades as well potentially. So you can have six attacks, that's going to give you excess attacks that you can put through to get implant. So if you're going into a team which has not got very strong melee output, I think this is pretty easy two points to get. A little bit of an edge case, um, if you're trying to implant something and you do it with a crit, you can still get a uh, reap and stun on that effect. So reap's a little bit more situational, but let's say you've got your shadow seer, you charge something, um, they roll one normal hit, you roll a crit and two hits. You can implant them with the crit, um, so that maybe you don't want to strike them because that might kill them. So instead you can implant them, still get the stun to parry that away. Uh, and then after that you might want to kill them. Another thing you can do is murderous entrance and implant. So this is another situation where you might want to implant with a crit first. And then after that you would do the normal hit, so just kill them off. Uh, fly as well, those really 8 inch charges as crow flies. Those will let you position well for capture hostage. So your gun needs to be outside 6 inches of the enemies. So that lets you get that little bit extra movement um, to get away and be outside that range for that tap up. Recon's another really good one. So again, you've got um, 3 APL, which is going to let you move and plant the signal beacon. You've also got fly for vantage. This is really good. So potentially turn one, you might even be able to max this on some of the maps. You might be able to move, get on that vantage um, and do that. So you'll be able to max it turn one, you'd have to do it twice. Uh, so turn one and two, you could have that maxed. Uh, really good for triangulate as well. So um, two other board edges are normally easy for this, but the third point can be a little bit more tricky. But when you've got fly and you've 3 APL, 
Uh, it's a lot easier to tag that up on our board edge. And it's useful for advantage as well. So a pickup action costing you one point, some potentially fly, pick up, uh, dash away. Not something that any other team in the uh, game can do really. Uh, one thing I probably would be reluctant to take here is overrun. You've only got eight bodies and yeah, you're, it's going to be tough for your opponents to not deny you having one in each quarter. And even then, I think if you're trying to score overrun, you're playing in something you don't really want to be doing. Uh, you can, yeah, I think you've got more flex by doing other things. Uh, finally, Seek so and Destroy. I really like this one where you've got a mission action primary. So again, something like Loot and Salvage. Uh, you're running around, you're tapping points, that's using up your AP for that. So you want to pick something for your attack ops which doesn't cost your AP. So Infiltration and Recon, those are pretty APL intensive already. Seek and Destroy is going to let you just go around, play the game, um, score points for those with your actions anyway, and then try and rack up these attack up points here. Uh, you've got Fly, that's fantastic for Headhunter. So there's nowhere really your opponent can be safe, you can potentially move dash and fire a fusion pistol at them within two inches so that's an 11 inch threat range straight away um, so you should be able to score this turn two unless they're playing really passively with their leader which they won't always want to be doing anyway uh, death gesture is fantastic for deadly marksman i think you would almost pick this up by default in a lot of matches if he's just sitting at the back and just counter punching enemies as they uh, shoot or charge your guys your semi-elite as well, so 8 bodies is pretty good for execution. Um, again, we're talking about charge, fight, shoot, um, potentially taking out 2 guys. That's going to make the, at least a couple of turns in the game where you're scoring more kills than your opponent is. Uh, generally, you're a melee team as well. Robin Round Sack and Route are great for those. And Route Combo is nice to lose Odyssey as well. So both of those you're wanting to finish your charge within 6 inches of the enemy. Uh, that's it. Um, I think I've probably missed a few things, I've done this a little bit quickly, but hopefully you found it useful. Um, let me know in the comments if you have, if there's any things you might like to see changed in the future format. Um, but yeah, that's everything for now, and uh, thanks a lot, I'll see you soon.